There we go. Hi, I'm Richard, and welcome to um, Dark Streets and Darker Secrets. Uh, this is The Price of Evil. Um, this is a game by Diogo Nogueira, uh, uh, just out um, in PDF form. And uh, this is a module by Zartov Kowalski. Um, it is a, a wonderful little toolkit module. You can play through it a bunch of times and get a very different haunted house experience every time. Uh, today we are playing the Hudson Valley Paranormal Society, uh, which involves uh, five, five investigators who are curious about the supernatural from the Hudson Valley area of New York. Uh, and I am going to have them introduce themselves to you. They'll be, they're going to be hiking out uh, to a remote place in the Hudson Valley, the abandoned old village of Forge, New York. Um, which, is which has, has seen strange lights and uh, weird noises coming from there. Um, and we are going to start, uh, Eduardo, why don't we start by introducing your character? Sure. Um, so I'm playing uh, Edwin Strain. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of just imagined, uh, you know, what would have happened if the, the kid from The Sixth Sense grew up and he never got help from the psychologist. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's kind of just sort of uh, like a weird consultant, you know, to the local police and, and DA. You know, he's thin, wiry, kind of tired looking. He's got a chronic cough. Um, you know, I'm kind of channeling kind of, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, Steve Buscemi uh, in this. Um, you know, he's a bright guy. He's, uh, you know, sort of uh, strong will. Um, um, uh, you know, but he's really in his element when he's in an urban setting. So he's going to be out of his element naturally uh, uh, as we head into the valley. Um, does that sound good? Perfect, thank you. Uh, and Jim, you're up next. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Jim, and I am going to be uh, playing, channeling, uh, I'm not sure what the right verb, I never thought what the right verb is, um, Jake Von Rin. So his Dutch name indicates his origin is um, his people have been here a long time. Um, and uh, he's, uh, he's in his 20s. He's very physically fit. I think I went overboard a little bit because I picked a, took a picture of Alex Honnold free soloing El Capitan. But he's, <laughs> he's a mountaineer and an emergency, emergency medical technician. Um, so he, he actually has been like he's like he can like be a guide and he's sort of tromped around these hills and i'm uh, from a, a few hours away from this area so i've actually climbed in mountains in the hudson valley um myself so a little bit of heart piece there um he has duties with a secret society so he's always kind of when um uh, at this point what we know is that um uh, significant events in the history of the Hudson Valley um, have uh, been meddled with by this uh, secret society, and they don't want uh, any clues for that to be surfacing. So when odd things happen, they send an investigator. Um, and he's uh, the nimble archetype. Oh, and his weird item is a, is a set of gloves that he's... Um, though he, he's, you know, he, he's not, he's not really a deep, he's not really a deep secret society man. I mean, he might've actually, you know, kind of sort of ended up being landed into it because his dad was in it. Mm -hmm. um, he has a set of silky gloves, which, um, he lifted, um, he, he saw these he saw these around and they were just speaking and there is a lot of inquiry as to what happened to these gloves but he loves them and they get when he, when he wears them and he touches something he can get um, well not a narrative sort of an empathic feeling based sense of the history of the item that he's touching mm -hmm. and he likes to do that with the mountains so question for you Jake the does anybody else know you're you're not just a hobbyist ghost hunter, uh, but that uh, you actually belong to a secret society? Um, I mean, besides the secret society members. Right, right. 
Um, and I wonder if we're sort of uh, kind of a a group secret society or a sort of a, a, a cell based, mm-hmm. um, you know, fin- or affinity group based secret society. Um, um, so, um, well, let's let's pick someone. Let's say that Hector, who I know nothing at all about, except that um, has a sense that I'm not. I'm not. Um, um, he feels that there are sort of crossed powers about me. How does okay. that sound? He's suspicious but, uh, for some reason. Does that sound about right, John? Is that is that about right with you? Yeah, that sounds good for me. Okay. And it, and Edwin, do do most of your colleagues in the Hudson Valley Paranormal Society know about your uh, work with the police? Um, yes, I think okay. so. I, I mean, okay. I, um, <laughs> you know, just as the the you know the police and the DA probably you know look at me as some sort of. Uh, you know, weirdo. No doubt the you know the rest of society looks at me as a weirdo for dealing with the police and the DA and you know sort of crossing this right. you know this line in a sense. Uh, you know, maybe a good way of summing it up is he doesn't fit in any group. You know. Okay. Nice. Okay. All right. Well, you 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 already look like Steve Buscemi, so there's a strike against being accepted as a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Okay. All right. Um, and then uh, let's see. Who is next? I think that we're going on to John's character, Hector. Okay. So um, I got Hector. He is. Initially, he was just kind of a guy that kind of got caught up in things. He would get, you know, uh, the the feeling that something was going on, and he would make his way there. Um, and eventually, he found that he, you know, it, it's almost like a higher calling for him. He can he can find out information about things uh, that other people can't, and um, by uh, and he can like see places. If he if he concentrates really well, he can he can like astrally project himself. Um, so he's kind of learned some of those things that exists uh, within him. But uh, otherwise, he's you know just kind of um, more of a, a laid back guy. He's not as experienced at all this as everyone else is. Right. Um, his, his weird item is he has a, a large bronze key that was passed down uh, when his grandfather died. And it has, you know, it, it was passed down to him as something really important, but mm-hmm. not with anything that it would go to. There was no lock, no trunk or anything like that. So. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that's what I got. Okay. And you are gifted, correct? Yes. Which uh, means you, you, have access to powers people don't normally understand. Um, so we will explore that as time goes on. Do you, do you think uh, Hector knows about celestial heritage or is that sort of like, you're just aware that you have? I would that? say probably not specifically, mm-hmm. you know, um, okay. you know he, he knows he's something different, but he doesn't know exactly what. Cool, okay. Thank you. And Robbie, I have you next on my going across the, the screen. Can you tell us a little bit about Amos? Okay, I am uh, Amos Carl Stott, um, mm-hmm. and I am playing the character type of the Nimble. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, my concept is that I'm a defrocked monk. So I was uh, somebody who was in uh, religious training and actually had become a monk at a 
a, a monastery and uh, I have left the monastery though and mm -hmm. um, was forced to leave the monastery. And so the, the nimble gets uh, a, another profession. So I've uh, moved to the Hudson Valley and am making my living working as a handyman. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, so I, I'm carrying some uh, handyman type uh, equipment with me in my kind of compact. I have a compact uh, um, electrician kit and a little uh, toolbox that I have mm -hmm. with me. Um, my uh, complication is that I'm hiding uh, some type of secret of forbidden knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I was kind of thinking that something happened at the monastery uh, that kind of brought me into, it was a disturbing con uh, experience uh, that brought me into some type of contact with um, something that I didn't quite understand, but that has really uh, kind of shook me up and created some of my complications at the monastery. And my, my, my weird item is a silver whistle that I received at the monastery and it was given to me by a very old monk who uh, seemed to be suffering from dementia and he gave this to me and I, I was kind of thinking, okay, the, the monks have a, a vow of silence, but maybe like they would allow whistles uh, as like mm -hmm. signaling devices if you needed to kind of alert somebody, but uh, would not need to break your vow of silence. But this has a kind of strangely unsettling pitch when, uh, when I blow it. Is it just when you blow it or is it when the person who gave it to you blew it? Blew it? Yeah. Um, English, I swear. Um, why don't we just say that I, maybe I never heard him blow it, uh, okay. but that I, I was maybe, you know, um, tasked with, uh, providing some, some help and care for him. And, uh, he was insistent that I, that I take this whistle of his. All right. Um, and you have, in the, you, you learned some things about the supernatural from what I'm gathering while you were a monk that caused you to leave the monastery. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Yes. I was thinking maybe we could, we could say that uh, I was suspecting that the abbot and some of the leaders of the monastery were, uh, I was suspecting trafficking in some evil magic or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and that brought me into conflict with them. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. All right. And last, but definitely not least, Stephen, uh, why don't you introduce us to Slugger? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. I'm, I'm playing Slugger Sims. Mm -hmm. He is 19, 19 years old. He's, he's, he's a young kid from, from Brooklyn. He's fairly tough. He ran with, ran with some games, gangs. Uh, a couple of years ago, he found himself working for the Avondale Repository, which is a secret collection of books in the in the main branch of the New York City Public Library. And he's not he's not quite sure exactly how that happened. His memories are kind of muddled, but he's got an ancient gem embedded in his breastbone, which sort of binds him to their service. And it also seems to have some sort of protective effect. It makes him just a little, a little bit tougher, a little bit more resistant to physical damage, maybe magical damage. He doesn't really understand how it works. It's it's like it's it's like light armor, even when he's not wearing wear, wearing armor. And he's the he's the tough archetype. He's basic. I mean, basically, he's he's used to being. He's he's used to being in fights and do and doing damage. Favorite weapon is the baseball bat, and he is not very familiar with the Hudson Va Hudson Valley area. But he was sent up here by the Avondale Repository. They're sort of interested in what's going going on up here. So he's basically going hiking for the first time in his life. Uh, you're muted. 
This is like sometimes I just poke at the the stupid little microphone icon and nothing happens. It's like a uh, share of fun to kid, huh? Yeah. Uh, Stephen, do you uh, have you been sent up here as a slugger to uh, to um, trying to say to uh, to sort of just sort of figure out what the paranormal society is doing or what other, what else is up here and they, they just told you to start going to paranormal society meetings um or did they tell you to come up and, and join this particular yeah they told me to come up and join this join this particular mission okay and, and report back and okay. i mean they probably have some specific agenda but i don't know what it is All right. Any other questions anybody has about each other's characters? Anything you want to add about your bio? Talk about any connections you might have or? Um, you know, I, I realized that I did not mention my weird item and oh, uh, cool. uh, probably good just to kind of run it by you too while mm -hmm. we're we have this opportunity before we get into oh, it. Um, so, so I, um, um, I kind of uh, uh, just sort of crafted this uh, um, uh, firefly encased in a small amber stone, sort of worn like a, a necklace. Um, I just imagined, you know, something like this, you know, sort of like uh, coming from the reliquary, I guess, mm -hmm. at the, the Basilica, you know, for St. Francis of Assisi, kind of just mm -hmm. borrowed in quotes, you know. I mean, he's got this thing for artifacts or for, you know, you know, precious items and uh um uh not sure if this is a stretch or a reach but kind of just imagine that it might serve as some sort of a signal or broadcast for whenever you know something of the the shadow is present mm -hmm. Does that did, make you, uh, did you casually lift that yourself or did you uh <laughs> want to bring that to you uh that's a very good question um um I would say that perhaps someone brought it to him that, uh, you know, perhaps through some, uh, uh, you know, s s you know, maybe backdoor deal or something to that effect, you know, he's, he's got mm -hmm. this on loan, assuming something like this would be, you know, behind, uh, you know, high security vaults, whatever. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah. Maybe just through a connection, he's been able to, you know, acquire this. Now you have a sinister pack. That is your complication. Yes. Um, could you tell me a little bit about sort of what that pact is? Um, you know, I haven't given it a lot of thought yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is something that we want to kind of, uh, uh, you know, discover through gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is it, um, you know, is that, you know, was there maybe some exchange for, you know, something precious for this sort of weird knowledge. Um, you know, um, uh, what do they say about uh, Cthulhu that you can't unsee it in some ways, yeah. you know, and, and uh, maybe that becomes a drive to see even more of it. Um, yeah, I, I haven't really fully thought it out yet, but uh, you know, maybe we can kind of, you know, like I said, discover it during gameplay. I okay. don't know if anybody has any interesting ideas too. I'm, I'm open to anything. I would suggest uh, just as a, this is just a suggestion, Absolutely. Uh, you may want to think about not, um, what am I trying to say? You may want to think about humans that you might have this pact with. Okay. You know, they might be co more complicated than just humans, but um, rather than like, oh, I, I got in touch with Cthulhu, but more in touch like, oh, I've gotten in touch with this nice Catholic priest who, who, rich, who, who disappears into the woods every third Friday. Sure. <laughs> no matter what the weather is like. Um, <laughs> Uh, so someone who might be able to get you into, you know, who might be able to bring something back. Okay. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Actually. I hadn't even considered that possibility, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, something a little bit more, more earthly that could actually maybe be a contact, maybe serve mm -hmm. as, yeah, yeah. You know, and perhaps even <clears throat> just to kind of riff on that a bit, mm -hmm. um, maybe the pact isn't done. Maybe it's like this constant exchange of something for, for something valuable. Okay. Right. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. 
So I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, given uh, my character's uh, religious background, mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether he would realize what that um, necklace is. Um, I mean, would, would uh, Amos have any awareness that this uh, companion on this adventure was wearing uh, something that had been borrowed from uh, the reliquary of St. Francis? If I, if I might suggest, I think bugs trapped in amber may not raise your suspicions, but if you see something happen with it, mm -hmm. that may... Trigger something. Yeah, yeah. yeah cause I've, if, I feel like bugs trapped in amber, you see enough of those that in and of itself would not be suspicious until you see it exhibit something supernatural or super weird. Mm -hmm. Unless, Edwin, you're thinking that it is uh, styled in a certain way. Uh, not particularly. I mean, okay. I, um, I think uh, being on a necklace and having a hole in it that you could. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, just for the sake of, of, uh, you know, I think my inspiration for this was, uh, Constantine. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if you've ever heard of the character or seen the, the film Yeah, and it, it's these innocuous items that just are, they're, they're kind of clever. They're, you know, these really clever set pieces, you know? Right. Right. Um, so I think, uh, you might start recognizing things, uh, Amos, when you see it do something a little more unusual than just sort of right. be a bug in amber. Mm -hmm. Um, and at that point you might, you might start recognizing, uh, legends, statements, things like that. Uh, cause I, I'm also not sure. Do you, do you, is this the kind of thing you wear under your clothes? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking maybe um, Amos might have uh, an idea of what Hector's actual deal is because he is the, the religious tie. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, if you want something somewhat similar. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. Um, and certainly some of that may become clear to you, um, Amos, as you as you go on. Right. Um, it may be you, you know whether you want to play it as just suspicions right now. I you know I don't know. I would say like you know on on a out of character level, there's not much you can be fully certain of, but Amos may be one of those people who acts certain long before. Um all the data is in. So, you know, that's, you may have hunches and I'll leave it to you to sort of think about how, how firmly you want to act on those. Okay. Uh, and then certainly as things continue in game, you may see more, um, and Amos, I think I'm going to hand this one over to you as a question. Um, how does the Hudson Valley Paranormal Society, you know, have meetings? Is it is it a local meetup? Is it a do you advertise for things in the library? Uh, you know, kind of what do you do to sort of find other supernaturally curious people in the Hudson Valley area? I, I don't think that we really advertise it per se, because we we realize that in our culture, if we did that, you know, who who knows who would show up? Right, right. But but I I, I imagine that this is a society that has a history behind it that has been around for a while, and. It, it has a a fairly extensive and kind of interesting network, uh, and it's 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 very common that you know when you go to a society meeting that you, you kind of expect to see a wide variety of people who would not normally socialize together and and do not mm -hmm. necessarily move in anything like the same circles. But you know, we we have a 
a, a kind of network that uh, is always kind of looking for people who will be serious about uh, the paranormal and not mm -hmm. simply be doing it as a kind of entertainment or something like that. Sounds good. Okay. Edwin. Um, What is the most number of people you've ever seen at a society meeting? Hmm. Um, I'd say no more than 20. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Jake, um, Why does the uh, secret society you belong to consider the society useful? You know, they let you sort of hang out with a society. Something they may even assign you to hang out with a society. Why do they? Why do they seem to think this this group is useful? Why do they think the paranormals are useful? Well, the paranormal society. You know, just the. You know, this is a this is the kind of thing that, like, you know. You know, they're not necessarily, in, you know, these people are not necessarily inducted into a secret society. They're just people who've sort of identified as curious about the supernatural. Sure. Um, I think they, they, they regard it as a nice um, safety valve. Okay. Um, the signal to noise ratio <laughs> is very low. Mm -hmm. So no one's going to really clearly figure out no one's really going to clearly be able to figure it. They don't think that people, that someone involved with that society um, is going to, uh, would, would have enough clear kind of information um, with all the, all the, who, the, the woohoo that's going to be in there to mm -hmm. actually point, figure out what the secret society has been doing, but they're glad that people who want to investigate have a place to go rather than actually doing some serious digging. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> Slugger, how long ago did you find out about this hike out to Forge, New York, this abandoned former village that no one's lived in for almost 100 years? Um, I how, think, did, how did the Avondale people find out about it, as far as you know? I mean, I think somebody brought it up at a meeting last month. Okay. And then the society sent me to sent me to the next meeting. Okay. And and sort of, I've been I've been out here in, in Hudson Valley ever uh, ever since until I finally got got this outing organized. They, the, the Avondale Society repository gave me a letter of introduction to somebody local who is right. not going not going on the on this on this hike, but he has some sort of connections. Right. Um, Hector. Um, What do you know, what have you heard about Forge New York? And I'm going to be taking notes on this. So if I take a moment to type, please. What do I know about Forge New York? Yeah. Like what, it, like what is, <coughs> and it may be, it may be intuitions as far as you're concerned. <laughs> But what do you what do you know or feel like you may know about Forge New York? Uh, and you may not broad details, but like what have you sort of like, you know, the supernatural thing that like when you start hearing hauntings coming out of there, what makes that more than what makes that seem like more to you than just a, oh, it's a you know somebody got murdered and a hundred something years ago, and you know their god their ghost is just showing up. What may what makes you think this might be? A little bit more dangerous than that, and it may um, be it may be intuitions. So uh, it may be or or dreams for you, uh, but sort of give me a little information about uh, sort of what's how that works for you. 
or what, what, what sort of made you especially interested in the, in the idea that sound and lights were coming from Forge? Um, I'm going to say uh, Miles. in part it is known as Miles. an area where there was like a major cataclysm, like a, like a, a, a mine cave in. Uh, a large number of people died all at once. Um, and recently I had uh, a, a dream of uh, of things coming from from under the ground. Um, that work? Is it possible that one of the reasons that uh the forge foundry was shut down is because uh, it just kept having too many very large accidents. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's fantastic. So, all right. Okay. Um, so let's start with a few things as we're getting ready the morning you guys are supposed to set out. You're expecting a three hour hike in good weather. In crummy weather, it may take a little bit longer. And uh, while they work, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you are expecting you will probably need to spend the night because you don't want to, you know, the thing about hiking in January is you don't want to um, you don't want to plan to uh, go on a three-hour hike and get back in the in the exact same day, especially if you need to stay and look at something. So you know you need to take camping gear. But as you get ready, I'd like to know from each of you, what's one thing you're doing either to prepare or research before you head out? Uh, and I want to start with uh, Edwin. What's something you'd like to, and you as the, as the uh, consultant slash researcher seem like the you, researching things before you set out may be the. Uh... I, um, so I, I um, I'm assuming that we would have had an opportunity to talk about this prior to, mm -hmm. and um, I would want to spend time researching this, this cataclysmic event that uh, uh, Hector mentioned um um you know every good uh every good conspiracy starts with you know what i mean some sort of meteor right. shower that happens every 10 years or mm -hmm. a sighting of a spirit in the woods by children you know what i mean something like that and so mm -hmm. um for him that would be sort of the the signal that this is not um this is not some you know uh you know fake news or you know what i mean some some uh uh, event without any, um, you know, substance to it. Okay. Um, so you're really trying to like, just kind of establish, uh, that there is, there's something here. There is a there there, right? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of understanding what's the, the history of the area, but more than just the, um, you know, the uh, history you get from news clippings. I mean, he's going to mm -hmm. uh, conspiracy websites and checking out, uh, you know, um, local legends, you know, of the Hudson Valley, uh, you know, mm -hmm. sort of, yeah, published papers or, or books that seem to get sort of low print, but that have value to people in this, uh, in this field. So there's, so there's two things you can do. I, I need to ask you this because, you know, and again, I, you know, just remind everybody who's watching the broadcast, just like I said before we started the broadcast, um, 
this is a, this is a very, very new game. I have not gotten to run it before. So I will, I will occasionally stumble across rules that I have, I've forgotten were there. Um, uh, or, or, uh, I'm learning about, um, and remembering as we go. So I think one thing that I had forgotten to ask you are what are your two areas or special study? And it can be moderately broad. It may be like, you know, religion or, uh, or secret societies, or um, the occult is, I think, a little too broad for the sure. But like, ghost might be a good area of study, or uh, medieval demonology, or or something like that. Uh, okay, yeah. So I I, I thought about one, um, mm -hmm. you know, just um, or maybe a science or anything, like, engineering, anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I had originally thought about religious relics, relics and artifacts. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just objects with some sort of, you know, uh, um, yeah, myth, legend, uh, right. you know, okay. uh, sort of peg to it. Um, and then I guess maybe the second, you know, might kind of tie into what I, I, I just kind of talked about, you know, maybe sort of, uh, you know, maybe, um, God, what's a good way of putting it? Maybe like a, a alternate history, you know? Okay. Um, and so, you know, there's maybe the history that we know about Stonehenge, but then there's this alternate history that, you know, people in the paranormal field really know, you know what I mean? That it was right. the Picts. It was a, you know, secret society uh, that actually, right. et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, so whenever you, whenever, you, whenever you use your two fields of study, you're going to roll twice. But I want to give you two things you automatically know. You automatically know the... The thing that um, Hector talked about, that they're shortly before Forge Foundry was closed for good by the company that ran the town. There was a massive accident that caused the that caused the uh, lots of death inside the factory caught fire and ultimately collapsed. Uh, and there were very few survivors uh, of people who were on shift at the time of the accident. Um, and, uh, in the ensuing sort of loss of life and, and inevitable lawsuits, um, the, the company just sort of folded. Um, it was around the time that the great depression started. So everything was already unstable and they just closed up the foundry, which within a few years led to the closing of the town. So there was always a, you already know there was a, a, uh, sort of a massive uh, layoff uh, shutdown of the factory out there caused by a very significant accident. Um, so that was sort of the first thing about Foundry, uh, or sort about the Forge Foundry you know. You also know that, uh, and here, it seems to you like the kind of thing that just sort of gets crossed over uh, but much like um, Sleepy Hollow, which is about 45 minutes, maybe an hour south of where you are, uh, also along the Hudson Valley, uh, there was a, uh, a famous headless figure. <laughs> um, not a horse person, not a, not a horseman, uh, but who was seen at night. Um, around the around the town um uh and there were several there were several local legends about this um but nothing that's been seen or heard of since long before the town sort of closed down okay um but the you know if you if you want to find out more about those, then uh, we can we can go into that. Um, but you're really just trying to figure out sort of like what would be especially what well, what you know how do you know this is a, a significant not just a haunting you know in a supernatural world hauntings are not terribly uncommon. What would like something that's worth investigating? Is that sort of what you're going for? Yeah, yeah, both that's real good way and, to put it both real and both real and worth your time. Exactly. Yeah. Th this okay. isn't just uh, the chupacabra. You know, this is like right. the real chupacabra, you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, 
Um, um, so why don't you grab two D20s and roll them? Okay. And take the one that is under, you know, take the one that's best for, for your intellect. Uh, okay. You want it to roll equal to or under your intellect. The closer you get to your intellect, the better, uh, without going over. Oh, uh, I accidentally rolled 2d6 and 2d20, so we can just oh, disregard those 2d6s. Yeah, yeah, just disregard the 2d6. Um, so I, I rolled a 4 and an 8. I'll, I'll take the 8, because I guess it's closer to my intellect. Right, OK. Um, but that's sort of a double success. You know that uh, one of the things that's significant about this is that um, the uh, the headless ghost was active um, from about the time of the U.S. Civil War until about the end of the First World War. Um, and uh, the sort of the center of most the headless ghost myths or stories uh, was the parsonage, the Presbyterian parsonage in town, um, which is one of the very few buildings still standing. Um, and it is a very, very, very Protestant parsonage. Um, there are rooms for an absurd number of children uh, which was assumed the parson, you know, the, the 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 pastor's wife was was going to be filling that home with many, many, many children, uh, and there are rooms for more children than could possibly have been there, uh, that, or that most families would have had. Um, and it is gigantic, uh, includes a lot of entertaining space, um, and. Uh, it's one of the few buildings left standing, and that was the center for a lot. Uh, and the last sighting of the headless um, ghost, who was never named, um, was uh, shortly after a uh, a new pastor came in around 1918 to forge um and uh, the last sighting was 1919 okay i, I don't suppose is there a name for the pastor even if it's just uh, for flavor or color bowman bowman, bowman. And uh, can I also inquire, you know, just this massive accident, was the cause ever, I mean, was it an explosion, for example, that could be tied to, you know, oil tanks or coal or uh, it steam? Was, uh, it started in the boiler. Gotcha. And the, expo the, the explosion upset the, uh, I've, I've lost my, uh, the smelting, not the, the smelting, but the, the, uh, the uh, what do you call where they the vast you know ton of tubs of of molten of molten metal uh, uh, that I now yeah something like that sorry completely completely blinking out on actual vocabulary words uh, and it's sort of everything sort of uh, sort of sort of fell apart from there gotcha. Um, and when was this? Oh, actually, do our characters know um, what? Um, I forget what Eduardo's character's name is. Edwin. 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 Yeah. Uh, that will be up to Ed, that'll be up to Edwin. All right. So maybe yeah. I, maybe I shouldn't ask clarifying questions. Oh, uh, you can you can you can ask uh, uh, sort of in character as we go. But uh, Edwin, is this the kind of stuff you would share with the group? Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this would be you know, uh, Edwin's pretty chatty. He would talk about this in the car ride. He'd talk about this in the hike. Even when they tell him to shut up and that that's enough, he would continue to you know, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, it's it's altogether possible that uh, that um, 
um, uh, Jake's question might be something that he, you know, researched or maybe prattled off, you know, some point of the trip. Oh no! I was so I was just curious, and I may have you may have already said this. Mm -hmm. uh, is the uh, so what was the timing of this last big cataclysmic killer explosion versus the the new Parson coming in? And that was the, about thirteen years apart. Of, the Parson was thirteen years before that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the and and what about the? Um, I'm just trying to get a chronology here. What about this last sighting of the the horse? Uh, the last sighting, the last sighting of the uh, the headless ghost, would was about a year after the new of uh, Reverend Bowman came. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, just for flavor, uh, in talking about this, you know, Edwin is uh, comparing this to t the Tunguska event, and you know, oh, who knows, man? And it might have even been like the same supernatural cause, but I don't know. And he just kind of goes on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you know, from about the time it's been about a hundred years since there was a known ghost cited in that in that area so all right and uh jake i'm going to come back to you for your prep since i'm assuming you're you'll actually be the person sort of prepping for getting them actually out there that's right. sort of your 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 great professional skill um amos what about you what are you doing to sort of get things ready Um, I think um, now, now we there there have been hikers returning that have been kind of talking about strange sights and and sounds that they've heard. Right. I, I think as part of Amos's preparation, he, he'll try to follow up on what he can if he can okay. if he can contact one or two of the the hikers who've returned he, he amos will not identify himself as being a member of the paranormal <laughs> society he's going to just you know identify himself as an uh as an avid hiking enthusiast who had been planning to go up there and wanting to kind of get some some information about what uh what they saw what they saw yeah okay. um and let me do a real quick skim of info just to make sure I give you the right info. Um, uh, So for social things, I'd like you, Amos, you know, since you're just sort of a trying to get people to respond to you, um, but also trying to get information out of them that will be useful. I'd like you to roll your luck. Um, so you're gonna roll a D6 and try to get a three or under. Okay. Now, and is there? I'm trying to remember with uh, with the rules. Is there anything that I can do to increase my odds on a luck roll? Yeah. So, one thing you can do is just um, you can t you can boost your you can boost your luck for this series or this 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 is this whole series will be one adventure. So you're going to boost your luck for this this series by telling me I can bring in. Uh, your uh, your hit hides a secret of forbidden knowledge. Right, um, and and I also see that I um, um, 
Uh, and that would take your, you know, your normal luck would remain three, but that would take you up to four. Mm -hmm. And you can also allow me to bring in your defrocked monk as a particular as a particular problem mm -hmm. uh, on an upcoming roll at some point. All right, let me go on and do that. Okay. Um, you know, so you you'll have that as something that you can use. Okay, I'm going to highlight that just so I remember. Okay. That. And do you uh, did you also want to do your hides a secret of forbidden knowledge? Uh, no, I don't. But I I, I also I I do have uh, as my for my character I do have also this luck is on my side where. Um, I can re-roll the luck roll up to during an adventure. I can do oh, it right. to my level. So I think okay. I'll I'll just go with this. Right. Go ahead and roll it. You're you want a four or less on this okay. one, and then you can use if you if you don't like the result, uh, and the, the you will get information no matter what you get. But I want to I want to kind of figure out what the how easily that's going to be come by. Okay. Okay. I rolled a one. Nice. Nice. Okay. So remember that you have you actually in most in most of these cases you would have like a a thirteen out of fourteen for sanity or a ten out of fourteen for physique or, or, or vitality, uh, but in this case you have a four out of three, so you've actually exceeded your normal maximum, uh, and that stays there until you start using it. So uh, okay. you can go ahead and record that on on the keeper okay. um, as four out of three. Um, But uh, yeah, you find two things. You find a uh, uh, I'm gonna say you find three things actually. Uh, <coughs> one. <coughs> Uh, you talk to two NYU students who've come up to go hiking. Um, and uh, they got lost uh, because one of them saw somebody in the woods and tried to follow them. And they ended up near the house where they uh let me check my notes to make sure i tell you the right thing um they are they, they they you know they there's a lot of foundations and broken down buildings left um but the one intact building is the old parsonage uh, in fact the church is not even intact it's 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 just the old parsonage uh, they definitely heard voices coming from inside the old parsonage. Um, and they thought they saw light of some sort coming from the front right upper window. So the upper window on the second floor. They could have sworn they saw something. Um, um, you also talk Um, to somebody who talks about uh, you talk to a woman um, maybe I mean late 50s early 60s avid hiker uh, she spends a lot of time in the woods 
Um, and uh, as she was going by a trail that's near Forge, New York, um, she uh, she uh, she saw a guy who she swears looked like a spitting image of her ex-husband when he was younger. That's how, that's exactly how she describes him. Uh, she was a spitting image of my ex-husband when he was younger. Um, and, uh, He was trying to get her to follow him. Um, and then finally you talk to somebody who got lost near there. Um, on Sunday just before Christmas, so uh, December 23rd. Um, and uh, since they'd sort of gotten turned around and lost and it was late, they had just enough gear that they thought they could just kind of put up a, they could sort of just make camp until the next morning. Um, but they saw a figure standing in the old tower over the house. And this is an old brick tower. It's really weird. It's if, if you've ever been to New York city, um, New York has these kind of ornate what things that were originally, they're now sort of like just sort of tourist sites and attractions, but they were originally uh, developed as like really ornate watchtowers for the rivers. Um, Belvedere Tower in Central Park is sort of one of them. And this, this, the old parsonage has a, a rather ornate looking brick tower over it. Uh, and they swear they saw a strange figure in a dark coat standing on, standing on the top of that tower just right before sunset and they freaked out so much that they surged off into the woods um actually leaving a little bit of their equipment behind uh and we're just very very lucky to find one of the fire roads and make it back so uh Amos, those are the three things you learned. Do you have any? Did you have any follow up questions on that? Um, the 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 New York NYU yeah. students yeah. who saw what, was there anything uh, you know strange about the color of the lights or anything? I mean, did they look like just natural? They specifically said it looked like. Uh, well, for one thing. The person they described following was also a guy, but did not look like the one the woman described. Mm -hmm. um, the way they described this, they described someone blonde, um, tallish, um, um, but, uh, they said it almost looked like somebody was flashing a mirror of some sort. It wasn't like, it wasn't like somebody was lighting a lantern or anything like that. It's more like somebody was catching a light with something shiny, catching the outside light with something shiny. This is the, this is the figure on the tower. No, this is the one on the upper right front window. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't, 
realize there is a figure up there. I just thought there was just a light. No, they just saw, they just, the, those two, those two NYU students just saw a flash. Oh, okay. I get it. Uh, and it was, it was when they, when you asked them that they, they described it as less like somebody had lit a candle or a lantern or a flashlight or something like that. And more like somebody was, was screwing around with a mirror. Okay. And, and the, 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 the woman, does she know what, where her ex-husband is or? Uh, she tells you the fuckers in Florida. Okay. But she doesn't keep in touch with, with the ex-husband? No, no, no. But also he wouldn't, you know, look like that. Um, uh, actually, yeah, I think she does say she does. She, he does send postcards. Okay. Almost passive aggressive spite postcards about how great life in Florida is in the winter. Um, <laughs> Uh, Hector, what are you doing to get prepped? Hector's prep would probably be uh, just kind of getting his gear ready, you know, making sure he has uh, fresh laces for his boots. And yep. a nice large selection of like trail mix and uh, uh, nutrition bars, right? You know, just to make sure we're all well prepared and uh, well nourished okay. on our journey. Um, Hector, money's pretty tight for you, isn't it? Yeah, kinda. Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you, and everybody has you know, a couple of days food. I'm going to ask you, Hector, to roll uh, your money. Okay. And that's a, it's just a straight D6? It's a straight D6. You want a two or less. Okay. Hey, a two. A two. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You don't have trouble finding sort of like, you know, budget stuff. That you can you can pick up. Um, there's definitely a, um, you know the you know the way to go is is definitely a, is definitely less relying on fashionable hiking bar you know the fashionable nutrition bars you pick up mm -hmm. in the gas stations all up and down the Hudson Valley, um, and you know that uh, the thing to do is pretty much sort of make them yourself, and you can get a lot more density on them. Um, I mean, they, they may not taste as good because you're not using as much dark chocolate and softened, softened dried fruit and things like that. But, uh, you can certainly get a lot more nutritional density when you make hard tack and pemmican yourself mm -hmm. than when you use like, you know, kind bar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So and it's and it's not hard to find people who will you know in the in that area who who can you know make those things. So picking up raw ingredients, cooking them yourself the night before. You know you know you know the smart ways. Sweet. Um. So uh, you've probably got some you know separate from your pack you may, you may also have some food stashed on on your person. So even if you were to get lost in the woods, you would you would probably still have something. So, um, all right, uh, Slugger, what's prep like for you? Um, well, I think I'm researching bears because I'm uh, I'm, I'm kind of nervous about this, and I'm also researching whatever supernatural creatures are native to this this region whatever 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 why whatever wild animals i might run into when walking through the forest uh luckily your dossier on the region you know happily reminds you that uh that bears are hibernating um this time of year uh in theory 
you could get messed up with a timber wolf or a red wolf or something like that. Not a timber wolf, but you know, the, the variety of wolf that um, is common in the Hudson Valley region. Um, but mostly most animals have a sort of calmed down, cleared out, gone to where there is more food. Um, uh than you would and in, in, in certainly the american black bear much like its other bear cousins is hibernating uh this time of year um even though you you it doesn't put your mind at ease when you've done practice hikes in the area and there are signs everywhere that say all trails may may lead to bears yeah yeah i'm gonna get some bear spray anyway Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I won't make you roll for bear spray, but, um, but, uh, the supernatural creatures, what I'd like you to do is, uh, go ahead and roll intellect. Okay. That's an 11 and my intellect is 10. Okay. Um, I mean, you, you know what everybody knows, that the, the dominant supernatural creature of the Hudson Valley is um, the dominant supernatural creature of the Hudson Valley is, is ghost. Um, there are, you know, you know the, the Hudson Valley area has been settled for by Europeans for closing in on 400 years. Um, and uh, certainly the Lenape and other, and other Native American tribes have been here for, for even much longer. So the, you know, there's the, uh, the dominant supernatural creature you associate, you associate with the Hudson Valley as ghost um, up in the mountains, though, um, certainly all the uh, all those Dutch Reformed and Presbyterian pastors certainly talked about demons a lot. Um, So who knows what spiritual forces you might find up there. Uh, that bear spray may not be effective against. Uh, yeah, but I'm still more worried about bears. All right. Um, that makes him a city person because someone from yeah. out here realizes that the, the, the black bears don't really want anything to do unless they're trapped right right they're not going to attack right oh well yeah but i've got i mean i've got a lot more experience with supernatural creatures at this point than with bears so right 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 um except for sports teams from chicago there's not a lot of the bears that show up in in new york city um so, uh, so yeah, uh, you've got bear spray. Yeah. Um, uh, which you may even know that a uh, bear spray is relatively more effective against against the black bear than it is against the the western grizzly bears or anything like that. Um, so, you know, you should take some comfort in that. Uh, the person who sells you the bear spray makes sure to tell you that uh, that uh, if you're close enough to the bear that you need bear spray, um, you might be in real trouble. But uh, I think maybe once they realize that you're uh, you're nervous, uh, they they like to tell you lots of bear mauling stories. Okay. 
Well, I mean, I am I am from the city, so I'm used to people trying to mess with me. So this actually this actually reassures me. Okay, I can tell that they're that 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 they're messing with me, and I think, well, maybe this is maybe this is all exaggerated. Right. All right, and I think uh, Jake and Lester, something you want to do. I'd like you to roll intellect for setting out, unless there's something you want, you know, something you want to do before you set out. And this is going to be an advantage because you have Mountaineer as a profession, which I'll, I'll take to include basic guiding. And Jim, you are muted. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, all right, so I'm rolling it. I'm rolling with advantage, right? Yep. Uh, let's see here. And intellect. Boom, I'm over with both. Over sure with can, both. You sure we can't just roll for high? Yeah. That's, <laughs> what's your intellect and how did you do? Um, so my intellect is 12 and I rolled an 18 and a 19. I think I think my D twenties have my vibe of wanting to roll high on them. <laughs> so you were supposed to get to forge around uh, noon. Um, I'd like somebody just to grab and roll a D six for me and tell me what you get. Uh, one. One. You end up getting there around 3 p.m. You can tell just by the light, the time on your phones. Um, late afternoon by the sun. Late afternoon by the sun. Um, so there's no trail that leads directly out to Forge. You have to veer off from a, one, you know, a couple of different trails. Um, there's, there's no old road. I mean, I know you said that, but it seems. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's fragments of old road, uh, but you have to sort of hunt for them. You know, their locations are not consistently marked. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you've been out to forage before. It seems like the kind of place that anybody who grows up hiking would go out to. Sure. Cause it's cool and funky. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's cool, funky, and not on a marked trail. But uh, what's the first... How do you know... Or what, what gives you the feeling, almost, that something is fucking with you? on this this getting lost thing um You know, right there, there's those two trees at the top of that rise. <clears throat> and um, I know that right beyond that, I was able to see um, see a stream bed. And the land just goes, goes flat. This is almost like not where I've been before, but I've been here before. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's always possible you're misremembering, you're getting turned around. Sure. But yeah, you're getting that feeling that something is fucking with you, either you or your sense of direction. Right. Um, or your sense of where you are. Um, so it is, the shadows are getting long. If, you've, if anybody's been out in the woods, um, well before sunset, the shadows start to get pretty heavy. Um, and uh, up here, January, you know, early January, the sun, the sun is the sun is pretty much set by four thirty. Um, 
or it is dipping over the horizon by about 4.30, uh, a little after 4.30, you know, as, as we get a little bit away from the, the solstice. Um, the shadows by three o'clock are, are starting to get a little bit long. Um, as you sort of get into the area, you, you begin to recognize this forge. Oh, there it is. Um, you can, you can kind of see how it looks a little more orderly. Like, look, see, there's like a corner over there. Yeah. There's like an old, there's like an old curb. There's signs of poured concrete. There's, there's brick, there's foundations of concrete and brick. Uh, and you see these things throughout the woods, you know, but, uh, you're seeing them even more, uh, as you get close and then all of a sudden it's mainly clear. The trees are newer. Um, they're a little more sparse. Um, and you begin to see the signs of buildings and then you see the big tower, uh, that kind of comes up from the middle of that old parsonage. Um, as if somebody at some point wanted to install a watchtower, which is weird. Um, also not quite tall enough to be properly a watchtower, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't really catch your just description. It's, it's, is it's you know, brick part of the parsonage or is this is like a, it's a, it's, it kind of comes right out of the, you know, it, clearly the it's, it's supported below that, but there is a brick tower that just sort of, is it, does it look up like about a, a story and a half? Like, does it look like a smokestack? It looks more like one of those, uh, before there, you know, New York had all the tall buildings. There were, there was watchtowers that were set up for both the East river and the Hudson river. Yeah. I'm going to have to Google that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they're just, they're just brick structures that look like somebody just wanted height. Uh, yeah. and they usually have, they usually have turrets just for decoration. Just so they look a little bit like old world castle towers. Huh. Um, and then you climb up. Like, is there a? There's a. There's an. There's an. There's You've not, a, there's not an been inside, stairwell. but it looks too thin for like a proper staircase. Uh, there's some sort of spiral staircase or a ladder. Hmm. But it's, 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 it's interesting. Too narrow. To me, it's, it's interesting to me as a climber, but you know, it's like you know, a brick structure a hundred years old. I do not really trust it I, I it's not the height that scares me it's the probably the flaky yeah. the, the artificial construction yeah so there's a clearly it's got some support since it's not collapsed into the first into the second floor of the but according to what Irwin heard that is where um that's where the person who got lost, who, who right. got lost in the, you know, was going to camp here until, until sunrise, uh, saw something standing. Shadowy figure in a dark cloak. If it's been standing this long, you could probably climb it without a problem. Um, so are we are we kind of done with prep and now we're gonna like kind of do some playing? You are right you are. It is three o'clock in the afternoon. You are several hours from uh, you know uh, just because. Um, oh man, I'm screwed up on that side of the Hudson. But like, uh, we'll put it on the the east side of the Hudson River. You are several hours from any of the Nelsonville towns, so Cold Spring, Manitou, Garrison. Uh -huh. Um, and, uh, you're, you're, you're a few hours from any of those, um, cell service is going in and out as you hike. Even sometimes when you're just standing still or take a break, cell service goes in and out. Uh, if it, if you need it in a critical situation, that's a good, that's a good use of luck rolls. Um, or I may just, we may just determine it's out kind of depending on what's going on. Um, but if you've, if you've hiked out that way, you know, um, for some reason, hiking in Tennessee, I always have a signal 
hiking in New York State, one of the technology centers of the nation. Uh, I cell, cell <laughs> signals cell signals are terrible. Uh, yeah, um, it's the chemtrails that are. Yeah, it's the chemtrails that are messing them up. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, Okay, Let well, us do uh, is a ten minute break good? Let's good do a ten minute break mm -hmm. and uh, get water, take a bio break, and then we will kind of come in, let you guys you can you can take a little bit of a look around the town that you think you may have seen most of it. Uh, or you can head into the old parsonage. Um, I can tell you from outside, the parsonage is a two story structure with the the big tower sort of over that two-story structure, the tower seems to start from the rear of the of the the space, um, and uh, you're guessing just by the height of the the front stoop. There's probably a cellar down there, Uh, but there's a small patio sort of up, up a little bit of a stoop. But uh, let's take a break and we'll come back and you can tell me what you're doing.
All right, welcome back. So I've actually camped in the Hudson Valley. I've I've been hiking, but never camped. I'm 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 a day hiker. Uh, I was actually only, I've only camped in a in a in a state park, just sort of driving right. At, there's about three hours south of um, Albany, I think near New mm-hmm. Scotland. There's a there's a postage stamp state park right off um, right off the highway. That's I live in Philadelphia. Right. So it's a it's a long drive from Albany straight to philly so i've that's where I've, i usually stop to camp well, that's cool I, uh, but it's lovely up there i think it's yeah. such a beautiful country it's it's a lot of fun for hiking because the it's, it's the mountains are just tall enough to be interesting but they're they're definitely lower than say like you know eastern pennsylvania or northern new jersey uh uh, and the towns are just like a, a rolling band of cuteness, starting starting somewhere around Irvington, Sleepy Hollow area, and just kind of proceeding all the way upwards. And in most of them, you can get to by train. So, right. And there's uh, there's a Metro North stop for the Appalachian Trail, mm-hmm. still, I believe. There's one. Yeah, that kind of goes. The Appalachian Trail stop goes up through the center of sort of the Westchester Peninsula. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then there's two. Beacon and Cold Spring are, are the big town hiking stops. And then on the weekend, there's two whistle stops, Manitou and Breakneck Ridge, uh, that are near the Appalachian Trail that sort of intersect where that come down. So, all right. Let John get back. Uh, John, one more minute. John, you there? Hey. All right. So let us... You guys are in front of the old house. Uh, the uh, The area of the town is pretty pretty thickly grown. Uh, with both grass, dead trees, um, old shrub, and uh, and uh, tall grass, um, and like I said, the shadows are getting kind of long. There's a little bit of a clearing around the town, just because a the trees can't grow as densely uh, where pavement was, and and uh, they're not as old. As some of the trees in the area, um, but uh, it, it, even the clearing area is, is fairly overgrown. Um, what do you want to look at and or do? Amos um, will say, "I, I, it's getting late in the day." I think we might want to be a little cautious about the parsonage. We've heard two different accounts that someone or something might be in 
the the parsonage. Uh, maybe we want to um, walk around, get out of clear view of the the tower, walk around and see what else there is to see. Uh, I, I am kind of curious to see whether whether there are still uh, the signs of that that large explosion. I mean, to find where the the old foundry was, where the the big explosion uh, occurred. But I also don't don't know that it's wise for us to be right out here in the open with the tower, with that that house where we have a sense that there might be someone or something that's in there. Um, Amos, go ahead and roll. Let's see your intellect. Um, and do this at advantage as a religious person. Okay. Am I too? Um, I rolled a three and a two. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not necessarily critical, but both both successes. Um, and uh, you're vaguely aware that if anything is decidedly dangerous, it's most likely to be active at night. Um, that there's, that there's, there's a, there's an actual sort of metaphorical connection between the notion of shadowy, for, shadowy forces and shadowy times. Um, and it's, it's less about midnight and more about that sort of pinpoint, right, you know, pinpoint moment um right between uh sundown and sun up uh as when the theoretically the night or that particular night is the darkest uh yeah you know that's not that's not you know true in terms of physics because that depends on a combination of moonrise and how much moon you have and and when it's going to be up in the sky and all that other stuff but uh, there's there's something there's something less about midnight, you know, the, the time we think of, and more more symbolically about the middle of the night. Uh, so if it's if the sun's going down at five and and coming up at uh, at seven, you've got you've got about a uh, fourteen hours. So you know that's 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 going to be that's going to be yeah. So it's you know seven hours after after sunset so you you're you're aware that uh it's also it's going to be most dangerous then but that's also when you're going to have some capacity to confront or study it um or you know as as you get closer to as you get closer to that sort of middle hour um there's also something since you got two successes on advantage i wanted to there's also something weird about the base about the what's left of the old church And the old church, where is that in locate? And is it right, right next to the parsonage, or is it? Uh... Uh, well, there's, there's not, there's not much left of the old church. But when you look at that, what that that portion that's left, the foundation, uh, the old portions of the brick wall, there's something odd about it that you wouldn't expect from one of those old company Protestant churches.
And I, I, I'll, 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 I'll point that out to the others. <laughs> uh, Jim, what did you say? I said like a mezuzah? No, no, no. <laughs> or do you mean like, nah, it doesn't look like it's a burned out building. It looks like not a... Well, it's it's yeah that 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 the the church itself almost looked like it just kept collapsing and people just hauled away portions of it and with three of you there, I think uh, uh you know certainly one of you know certainly the smart can uh can take a closer look at that, but uh. We should yeah, take a closer look yeah. while it's still daylight out. You should take what? Take a closer look while it's still daylight out. Huh. You know. well, sure, I'm interested in. It's December 23rd. What's what's the weather? Oh no, that was that was the that was the time. It's 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 January. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. It's <laughs> it's winter. Yeah. We're in the Catskills or the foothills of the Catskills. Right. It sounds like. Um, what's the weather now and how variable is it? Uh, you know, it's always variable, but I'd like you to go ahead and make an intellect at advantage. I was thinking I'd be the right character for that. Yeah. So, uh, one and one. Got a 10 and a 20. My intellect's uh, 13, I think. One and one? Okay. Yeah. Um, between the... A little bit of an app on your phone just your general feel for the weather um, and uh, well the app on your phone is telling you how quickly the the temperatures changed just you know you you can tell it's getting colder but you know how much it's it's hard to it's ever hard to it's always hard to say even when you're experienced uh, the app on your phone tells you that it's dropped to and is hovering at the low 30s and you have got that sense um jake you can just almost smell it you may be in for some snow mm -hmm. the sky is very gray and the clouds are very high Um, and it's that just right at the thirties temperature. Now you may not be in for much snow, but you may be in, you, you, you could in theory be in for some. Right. Um, well, I know, I know Hector was, um, hectoring to, <laughs> to, to scout around, but, um, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to look, I, I want to, I want to find a place to, to, I want to decide where we're setting it. Yeah. Okay. That figured out because uh, then we won't have to worry about it. Okay. Hector, what were you wanting to look at? The church uh, or the, the house or? Yeah, I was just trying to spur some other people, but uh, I'll go take a look at the, uh, the, uh, the, the parsonage. Okay. Now the parsonage, just to kind of paint the picture, big building, two stories, it's got the tower coming out of the rear. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like walk around it if there's any areas where I can look in that are at ground level, mm -hmm. see what we can see inside, like make sure there's nobody like hanging out inside. Okay. <laughs> so, and you're looking for a camping area, correct? Uh, correct there, uh, Jake? What is anybody else doing? Um, I'm following Hector around. I'm sort of keeping keeping an eye out for anything that's threatening while he's more looking for looking for clues. You see no bears. You don't see anything that even looks like a bear, but that may just be right. that they're waiting. Right. Right. You right. Are great actually, at I mean, actually, at the moment, I'm more concerned about supernatural creatures. But... Okay, all right. Um, Irwin and and 
And uh, Amos, what are the two of you up to? Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of anxious that uh, I guess if there's going to be a snowfall, that it's gonna it's gonna obscure any clues, any um, you know, any uh, anything that's interesting. So I am also trying to take advantage of the little time we got and just take a look around. I don't know, if, uh, Amos, if you want to go check out the parsonage or um, anything that I could accompany you with. I mean. Um, I, I was, um, yeah, Amos is going to take out, he brought a, a little, um, video camera and he's going to take that out and start taking some pretty quick little shots of the parsonage and the, the weird kind of foundation of the church. Um, uh, Jake, do you need any, uh, help with, uh, setting up camp? Um, um, realistically, probably not though. Jake doesn't really want to be like the Sherpa just because the, he's the most experienced person. So he, he'd welcome, he'd welcome someone else. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if we have individual tents, if we're going to set up a tent, you know, I assume most of you have tents uh -huh. in your pack. So, um, so I'm going to encourage people. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm encouraging people. I think we should be. I think we should be over here. It doesn't sound like anyone wants to be in the parsonage, even though that's going to be our best. Would be our best shelter tonight. Well, let me take a quick straw poll. Um, does anything else look? Anything else of the of the buildings look at all sheltery? Does the parsonage look at all sheltery, or is it just the parsonage is intact? Mm -hmm. We could just sleep in. We could just sleep in the parsonage. It seems like a strong enough structure. I'm up with that, or I'm down with that. I mean, Erwin, you were going to take a look around. What what specifically were you looking? Were you looking at anything in particular? In specific, I, th I think some people wanted to see if they could find anything left of the old. Uh, factory. There was something weird about the church. Um, foundations. Yeah. Um, I, um, yeah. I um I mean I guess I was thinking that I would go take a look at the the uh, parsonage but it, it seems like now we're we're leaning towards staying there. Um Yeah, I mean it's um I I think kind of like I said earlier it's almost just sort of like a uh anxiety is kind of setting in that um yeah, if we don't if we don't take a, if we don't take in as much as we can right now, um it's going to be harder I guess once the snow falls. Um mm -hmm. So almost frenetically, just kind of, you know, sort of walking around the space, just trying to take it all in. I, I'm, I'm happy to accompany Amos as he's taking pictures or videotaping. Um, you yeah. know, perhaps there's, yeah, something that, you know, two eyes is always better than, or two sets of eyes are always better than one, I guess. Amos, did you point out that there was something weird about the foundation of the church? Yeah, I did. Put yeah. Your finger on it? yeah. Yeah, and and I think that yeah, if if we're gonna stay in the parsonage, I think you know Amos has pointed out that I think that there's something odd about that foundation, and I think yeah, maybe with the little light that we have and with my camera, I'll <laughs> go kind of we'll, we can go kind of take a quick look over there and and shoot a little bit of uh, quick footage of what we can see of that foundation. Um, all right. I would like Erwin to roll intellect with a positive dice or at advantage. So, uh, just so I'm sure I understand that's 2d 20 essentially. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. And you're going to take the one that's best for you. Um, so I rolled a nine and a 10 and I'll take the 10. Nice. What's your intellect? 
Uh, it is 14. Okay, and both 15, those, I beg your pardon, 15. 15. Yeah, okay, so both of those were under. Um, so, uh, and you, the reason you were rolling an advantage is because you are uh, you're very skilled at religious relics and you're not finding a relic per se. Um, but you realize probably what was scratching at the back of Amos's neck or the back of his head. Um, and given the history of the region, the, what little you know about it, this seems unlikely that this, that this particular thing would be what happened. Um, but it sort of looks like there was a foundation for a classic Catholic church. And then somebody built the foundation of a Protestant church over it, by which I mean somebody took a classic cruciform foundation and then laid a foundation um, for like a boxy, you know, auditorium style Protestant church, 19th century Protestant church over it. And the one that makes you really think it may have been a Catholic church and not just a converted like Episcopal church or something like that is that you can see where they had a hole near where the altar would have been you can see where the foundation is worn away enough where there would be a relic stored. Now, this town is not some ancient town where you would have had, you know, Catholics leave and Protestants move in or something like that. Um, so you might get weird suspicions of crypto Catholicism. Um, But uh, there's definitely space for somebody to have laid a relic under what looks like an original foundation that was cruciform um, and then had a and sort of a boxy, boxier thing sort of built over it. Um, um, so, can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this might be a bit of a stretch, but going with it, you know, would I, um, uh, would I know about any, um, oh gosh, what's a good way of putting it? You know, any sort of like, gosh, fads or um, any kind of trend in, you know, essentially having Catholic churches and, you know, hey, in the early 1800s, everybody had a piece of John the Baptist's skull. You know what I mean? Or everybody had, uh, you know, a piece of this or that. Is there anything mm -hmm. like that that I can sort of, you know, clue? Or is it just all over the place? You know, classically, to build, a, to build a church, a Catholic church, you needed a relic, either in or under the altar. Mm -hmm. um, that's no longer the case, but for a long time... I was just research, trying to research that online and was wondering whether, not knowing anything in real life about Catholicism. Mm -hmm. um, you also know, uh, and this is me being a Northeastern history nerd, uh, you know that there were lots of, uh, lots of company churches um, that had a, that had a, lots of Catholic workers who were sort of marched into church by their Protestant bosses. Um, so you would get these large auditorium style churches that were sort of filled up by, by workers uh, who were sort of escorted in by their, by their company. Um, so you'd get Irish, Italian, German Catholic workers sort of just marched in. Uh, so it, it was definitely, you know, Industrial America certainly had, you know, crypto Catholicism among the workers um, who would, you know, go to Catholic mass on Saturday night and be forced to show up on 
you know, the Presbyterian or Baptist or Methodist church on Sunday morning. Um, but you've not seen it. You've not seen it. Something that, uh, you know, you've not seen a, you've not seen that built into the foundation of an old company church. Does that make sense? All right. Amos, you were also looking around. Um, and I think you would be, you and, and uh, Jake would be the first people to notice as Jake is looking around for possible potential campsites if you don't want to sleep inside. Um, the two of you might be the first people to notice that between the church and the church side wall of the parsonage is cemetery. I mean, it, it sprawls out behind both of them, uh, which I think Hector will soon discover as you sort of make a perambulation of the, of the, of the grounds of the, uh, of the parsonage. Hector, you also noticed that, uh, much like you suspected by looking at the front where you had this relatively high porch that continues around the, the porch itself does not wrap around, but you could, you notice that height on the building continues around. There is definitely a cellar in here. Um, and it doesn't have windows. Is there like a, a clear entryway for it or anything like that? No, no, there's, that's especially unusual. Um, that whatever was taken into that cellar had to be taken through the house. I, you know, that may not be completely unusual, but it, it, it certainly is. It's, it certainly sticks out at you. That there's not like a, there's not like a, a cellar door that would take you in where you could just easily take foodstuffs or whatever you were going to store. Um, it would not be unusual for a for something up here to have a nice storage cellar because you want some place to store. Yeah, you gotta have yeah, room especially, cover. Yeah, especially when you don't have easy access to uh, when you're when you're having to haul up stuff from closer to the riverbank. Um, in uh, you know up you know up into the up into the hills around the mountains. Um. So uh, how's, how's the camp going? Because if we're done with that, I think we should look. We've got some underground spots in these. We should really check out, you know, like I said, before it gets dark. And, you know, because whatever's going on here, we want to know what we're going to encounter before hitting it. I don't think I'll be spending that much time. If, we're gonna, if we decide to camp in the parsonage, all I would do is probably sort of try to um, put together, um, gather, gather, um, Gather some wood and uh, put together a fire a fire circle right outside. Because um, we we're not going to want to have a fire inside the parsonage unless there's a unless there's a um, fireplace. Is there a fireplace in there? Uh, you can see um, some chimneys coming out. So you're guessing there's multiple fireplaces in any big home. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm just gonna gather. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna gather the wood, and then I'll be sort of walking around with everybody else. Um, yeah, the wood is not hard to gather. There's there's bits of old building. There's there's stuff that people have piled up for previous campsites that they ended up not using. Uh, so you're are you doing the fire circle outside? Well, I thought of that, but then uh, then. Then I realized it would probably have, they have a, I mean, my character, or no, no, I, Jim, realized, oh, there'd be a fireplace inside. Okay. So there's no reason to set up a, uh, an uh, outdoor fire circle. Okay. So you're just getting wood for the yeah, fire. Yeah, I was just a sort of in camping mindset. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. <laughs> um, so I guess my character, if not following around other people, I'd look at the tower. It's, it's, it's too cold climb something like that 
And you'd suspect based on the way it's it's kind of built in, there must be something inside that would take you from inside the house to up into the tower. Well, I might be interested in sort of, yeah, going in and exploring, exploring the yeah. person I'm just trying to find that basement. Yeah, I would like to go, uh, you know, once we open up the parsonage and, and go in, I want to see if I get any, uh, feel any disturbances inside the parsonage. One moment. Okay, so who's going in to the parsonage? I know that uh, Jake, Hector, anybody else? I mean, I'll, I'll go. I'll go in. But I mean, how much time do we have before sunset at this point? Uh, you have approximately. Um, let's say you've got you got here about three. You've been looking around. It's about three thirty. Sun sun's going down in about ninety minutes. And just so you know, I'm going to wrap up in about the next three or four minutes. So. Okay. All right. Three or four minutes of real, so, of real, of, of, yeah, real time. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll take I'll take point because I sort of figure that's my job. I've got like a flashlight in one hand and my baseball bat in the other. Nice. Uh, Jake, you were also going in, correct? Yes. All right. Um, and Hector, you were up there as well? Correct. All right. Amos and Erwin, where are the two of you? Um, I, I think Amos is going to, you know, after shooting, uh, you know, the foundation of that church um, and that area, he's going to kind of work his way to the cemetery uh -huh. And is gonna um, especially take some some videos to if there are any names that I see on on gravestones or anything like that. We'll get some some footage of that, thinking okay. that you know later on I could do that. But also while I'm doing that, I think I will start to kind of uh, probably be be praying a little bit for for the dead, uh, kind of paying okay. paying respects to the dead. Who are there, and then just kind of taking some some footage of the gravestones. All right. Um, and Erwin, what about you? Um, so I would. Uh, I'm going to just continue to accompany Amos. Um, you know, I uh, <laughs> have this creepy feeling that I I don't want to be alone. <laughs> You know, uh, Edwin's from a uh, sort of a rural part, and so he feels especially kind of like uh, out of his uh, uh, out of his element in uh, in the woods. Um, so yeah, going to accompany him, you know, to the uh, cemetery, and uh, just you know, again, just kind of taking it in, you know, just uh, you know, getting a sense of uh, you know the setting, the feeling, you know, what's around uh, before it's all covered with snow. All right. Um... Which one of you is opening the door, Hector, Jake, Slugger? The front door to the parsonage from the yeah. outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm. I'm sort of. He. He's opening the door. I've got my. I've got my eyes open for anything that might present a threat. Hector, why don't you just roll physique? Physique. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Uh, okay, eleven. Yeah. And I love that new portrait. <laughs> yeah, that's a fail. Oh. Yeah. The. Uh... <sighs> Hmm. 
the door feels stuck initially. And then you have to kind of put your shoulder into it. Um, and you come away with a little bit of a bruised shoulder. Um, I'd like you to roll a D6 and just kind of cut whatever you get in half rounding up. So really a D3. So that'd be three. All right. So you started with 13 vitality. Uh, and now you have 10. Uh, as you just sort of knocked yourself against the door before it sort of opened. Uh, and your shoulder is feeling a little sore. Um, And uh, you sort of shake yourself out of it. Um, and the door sort of opens. Uh, and in front of you is a, a rather nice entryway. Um, It's got kind of a, a double staircase that sort of merges in the middle um, in wood, you know, over a wood floor um, in the thin light coming in from the doorway. You see sort of a between the between the, the two sort of like sides of the staircase uh, is a suit of armor. Um, to either side of the staircase on each side, there's a couple of doors and there seems to be a hallway of some sort running behind the staircase. Um, yeah, this is just in the gray light coming in from the doorway. Um, there's not another source of light in here other than a, other than a, a slugger's torch, a slugger's a torch. Uh, I've suddenly become British. Uh, slugger's flashlight. Yeah, I, I would have a headlamp on. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so you've got those two kind of pivoting around, um, but a good 30, 40 feet in front of you is the staircase behind the staircase. Um, there seems to be some sort of hallway. Uh, you see, you know, hints of what looked like doorways back there and you can certainly see sort of the curvature of uh, the tower. Um, back there, but uh, you know, the staircase goes up. Like I said, there's a there's a, uh, a suit of armor sort of between the two sides of the stairs. And there's two doors kind of deeper into the first floor on each side of the staircase, both to your left and to your right. Um, Outside, as you're looking around at those graves, Amos and uh, Irwin, uh, you find, I guess, what you, you would expect. There's several, um, there's a lot of deaths right in the 30s, right around the time of the accident. Um, But uh, otherwise, there's a lot of badly overgrown graves, um, which is makes it unsurprising that you didn't really realize there would be. Um, you didn't really realize there was going to be a, a graveyard here until you sort of got through some of the tall grass and the, the shrubs that have grown in. Um, and let's end on this. I think the light is getting pretty dark or things are shadows are getting long. I think is the, the best way to put it And the air is feeling very crisp. Um, um, when you notice there's not about a, there's an unmarked headstone. It's 
rather ornate. It looks like one of those sort of mass produced or semi mass produced headstones that just never got a name engraved into it. Um, and going into the grave, and like I said, no name, no date engraved there, though there's clearly a space for those to have been engraved. Um, going into that grave, what looks like a fairly freshly, I mean, not like last week, but you know, within the last, you know, not, not ancient, not packed down and, and several years old, um, at least within the last month or so, uh, about a, I would say about, you know, one foot, maybe two feet across hole that seems to go down and looks like it's been relatively by which relatively is which I mean like a few a few weeks maybe a month uh, recently dug out a little too big and consistent consistently down for an animal uh, or a little too a little, a little too well formed for an animal um, but, uh, but definitely a hole in that grave and let's, this, in, is, this is in the grave bed or this would be like where the grave would be or, or this is where you would expect the grave to be. Uh -huh. Is it the same? Uh, is it the same sort of dimensions, like six feet tall? No, it's actually like it looks. It just looks like a like a one or two foot across hole that somebody just dug straight down into the grave. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot going on in this sleepy little town. <laughs> it's just Literally. like a one foot, one to two foot hole. Uh, it's not down. It goes. It seems you you you've not sort of like seen where it ends. It looks like somebody, but it's only like one or two feet across. Oh, okay. But it's it's right under the headstone. Before we before we go, does does anyone have any of that kind of paranormal society kind of funny stuff like an ectoplasm detector? Or I don't actually know the kind of gear they had. I no, I, I my thing was I was thinking like you guys are, are more of a informal gathering. You're not really like a government agency, or a, you know like you're not like a, a secret task force of Ghostbusters. You're 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 a little you've you've got a you've got a few darker secrets than the. Uh, the people who show up on the learning channel or a, a sci-fi reality show, but, uh, you know, you don't really, you, you don't really have like a crazy gadgetry. Uh -huh. You might think about like, a um, I get a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to, how does that feeling work? Uh, uh, Hector? Uh, I'm not really sure how it's intended to work. Uh, uh, let, me, let, me, let me grab the, the rules real quick. I didn't know if you if you had made a note of it. Um, yeah, I did, but I think I accidentally closed that panel. Um, I'm right here, so I've got it. Uh, I know it says it's an intellect check, but it doesn't really say like if you're supposed to trigger or if I say I'm doing a search. I'm gonna, or yeah, I think uh, in this case, you're here and this is something that you, you might notice. Uh, why don't you... Uh, 
because you also bruised your shoulder as you were you were coming in that door and then you've got this light suddenly on this place that looks like it's not seen a, a beam of light in many years um why don't you yeah why don't you make an intellect test and tell me tell me what what you get out of out in of, what your total intellect score is all right um the intellect is a 13 and i got a nine all right uh Hector, like, I guess even now, like you, you might be tempted to try to like, think of them as physical presences. And you know, they're not physical and they don't really act like physical presences. Like you can't point to and say like, oh, it's the thing is right there when it's not being manifest, it's, it's more nebulous than that. But there's definitely a sense of something inside the house. That's old. And like the best kept buried is what you what you think about the thing that's whatever is inside the house uh but there's also something outside the house and you get a sense they aren't the same thing I'll, I'll tell people that you know there's definitely multiple presences or or whatever you want to call them around here. All right. In that case, let's wind up with that. Uh, thank you guys. I'm going to stop the broadcast.